It's been more than 120 years since the United States took control of Puerto Rico from Spain. Since 1917, Puerto Ricans have been American citizens without federal government representation. Now the island's territory status is the subject of two bills introduced in Congress this year. Puerto Rico's governor, Pedro Pierluisi, has been pushing for statehood for the island. He explained why in an upcoming CBSN Originals documentary, Fighting for Paradise, Puerto Rico's Future. How come we are citizens of the most democratic nation in the world, yet we do not vote for the president of that nation? How come we have no voting representation in Congress? as American citizens. It's like geographic discrimination, and it makes no sense. We're not immigrants. See, what happens in Puerto Rico when our people do not have an adequate quality of life is that they hop on a plane and move to the States. And Governor Pierre Luisi joins me now. He is a member of the pro Puerto Rican statehood, new progressive party, and a Democrat when it comes to national politics. Governor Pierre Luisi, uh, welcome. Uh, before we get to statehood, I want to ask about your meetings with federal officials lobbying for equal Medicaid funding. What more can you tell us about that and how those meetings went? Well, yes, I am uh, right now in Washington, D.C., meeting with uh, members of Congress, meeting with uh, White House officials. And, uh, yeah, that's the first topic of conversation. We have a Medicaid program in Puerto Rico, but it doesn't, we don't have the same treatment that the states get um, across the nation. Um, right now, the funding we're getting, most of it, ends September 30th. So what's happened, we call it a, a, a Medicaid cliff. Um, it, Congress will, will have to address this because our health program would collapse if, if it doesn't. Um, that's unfortunate. We should have either a permanent uh, participation in this program on an equal basis as the states, or at least a long-term funding, a 10-year deal, um, so that we can budget for this and we can provide the basic health services that a lot of our um, population needs. On another topic, Puerto Rico continues to struggle getting reliable electricity ever since Hurricane Maria devastating the, devastated the island in 2017. Governor, what are you doing to address that? Well, uh, we our electrical grid is very fragile. It's been fragile for too long. After Maria, in some places in Puerto Rico, there was no power for up to a year. That's totally unacceptable. So uh, we are we now have a public-private partnership, a, a consortium composed of two uh, well reputable. Uh, electrical companies, um, which um, are taking care of the transmission, distribution, and customer service um, part of the business of the Puerto Rico Power Authority. Um, they assumed this um, responsibility on June 1st, and it is very important that we improve um, the electrical um, system we have in Puerto Rico. We need a robust, uh, cost-efficient, um, the reliable um, system. And that's what this P3 is all about. I will be doing oversight on it uh, to make sure that it complies with its, its contractual obligations. Uh, but that's, that's the first step in the transformation. The second step is to enhance our generating capacity, turn to renewable energy ever more so, so that uh, we stop burning uh, so much oil um, and contaminating our environment in doing so. Let's turn to the issue of statehood. This debate has been going on for generations with several non-binding votes along the way. Last November, 52 percent of Puerto Rican voters said they supported statehood, while 47 percent voted against it. Are there other options to address the island's territorial status on the table? There are other options. There's, there's, we've always had uh, multiple options. In the past, we had plebiscites, multi-option plebiscites, and uh, the issue uh, we always had that was that some of the um, voters uh, complained 
that their option was not well defined that, or that their option was not included in the plebiscite. Last year, we did something different. For the first time, we held an up or down vote on statehood, which is one of the options. And a majority of the people uh, chose statehood. We did this on our own. Um, without any kind of congressional legislation providing for it. So now the next step is, is for Congress to respond to this vote uh, of the, by the American citizens living in Puerto Rico. Um, statehood should be uh, the next step. Congress should be laying out the terms and conditions for Puerto Rico to become a state. And we're ready to vote once again in a federally sanctioned referendum. I am sure you're going to get an even stronger majority when that happens. Well, I'm curious, in the decades of debates about statehood, have you noticed any significant shift in the Puerto Rican consciousness on this issue? The fact is we, we are very much... Uh, part of America. Uh, Puerto Rico's economy is intertwined with the American economy. Most of the goods we import come from the U.S. mainland. Uh, and uh, a lot of our manufacturing sector um, is, is basically U.S. corporations uh, doing um, business in the biopharma, uh, uh, medical devices, aeronautic, aeronautics, um, industries. Um, it is a, it, we are contributing to the nation um, a, a, ever more so. And, but we want to have the same rights. We want to uh, vote for president, uh, have a congressional representation, a voting congressional representation, and uh, equal treatment in all the federal programs. It's about time that happens. And you're talking about 3.2 million American citizens residing in Puerto Rico and facing what I call geographic discrimination. Because if they hop on a plane from one day to the next, they, they're treated equally. If they move to Florida, Texas, New York, the Carolinas, they're treated equally. Why? That makes no sense. Finally, Governor, COVID restrictions are easing and millions of people are vaccinated. Is that bringing any relief to your economy, which does rely heavily on tourism? Yes, uh, we will be meeting President Biden's um, goal uh, by July 4th. Um, close to 70 percent of our adult population has already gotten at least one dose of the vaccination. Um, uh, we've been doing uh, uh, all we can to promote um, vaccination. Uh, we were careful. Uh, we, we were pretty strict. We had a lockdown for a, a long time and um, all kinds of restrictions. Uh, we're open for business and tourists are visiting Puerto Rico. Uh, as we speak in the middle of the summer, it's becoming a year-round destination. Um, and, and that's a very important sector of our economy. I want to have this pandemic behind us like everybody else. And I know that's going to be a, a, a very positive for Puerto Rico's future. Um, but as I said before, we also have a vibrant manufacturing sector. Um, the professional services in Puerto Rico are top, top quality, um, and we export them as well. Um, so I, uh, we welcome uh, all American citizens, everybody, to come and, and visit us. Uh, you'll see uh, that we're, we're making a difference. All right. Governor Pedro Pierluisi, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you.